the moment has arrived where once again my husband has disagreed with me on a comic book title. I'm shocked. Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I'm your host Laura and this is the best co-host, my husband Scott. So before we get into the nitty gritty details on how this rare occurrence has taken place where my husband and I have an occasional disagreement, because that never happens, let's talk about our subscriber giveaway. Now, Scott, what number are we trying to reach? We're still trying to get to a thousand subscribers, I believe. We uh, are. Yeah. So be sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, like, you know, send this link out to other people, share it with your friends, get them to subscribe if you think it's something they'd be into. And comment on these videos. Definitely comment. Your comments help immensely. Yes, you're helping shape the channel. So if we get to that wonderful number of 1,000 subscribers, we are going to get some lucky winner, a 9.4 slabbed spawn number one. Thank you, Patrick, for donating this. Mm -hmm. It's an incredible giveaway. It's awesome. And all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment on videos. And of course, you also get your Married with Comics bookmark. Wonderful, lovely little design that my wife came up with. Yes. Very proud of those. Before we get into our title of Extraordinary Measure, mm -hmm. we need to explain something very quickly. Now, Scott and I have talked to you all about kind of that line in the sand of storylines that we do not like. So, for instance, with Scott, it's animal abuse. With me, it is abuse against women. These... Things, when they take place in most storylines, it just creates such an enraging point that we can't stand it. I How? have a physical reaction to it. That's what it is. I have to kind of skip that part and go on. Completely. However, we're big fans of serial killer stories, documentaries. We <clears> love <throat> murder mysteries. And guess who's the victim in most of those stories? The animals and the women. We're a contradiction. What can we say? So today's title is none other than, Did You Hear What Eddie Gein Gone Done? Sorry. Did You Hear What Eddie Gein Done? <laughs> Let's make the bad grammar even worse. <laughs> Being that it's about a serial killer, you know there's going to be something involving uh, a f segment that she and I, one or the other or both, will you know have a problem with. Typically, we both like this genre, and whether it's in book form, TV, you know, movie, Absolutely. Yeah, we normally agree. We normally agree. So how on earth did we disagree with this title? Now, before we get into that, let's talk about what the title is. For most people who are not familiar with who on earth Eddie Gein is. Now, Eddie Gein inspired what kind of stories? Uh, a lot of different things. So Eddie Gein is a real life person, first of all. Um, he was in the Plainfield, Wisconsin area when he committed his crimes and was caught. Um, but he went on to definitely inspire uh, people like Robert Block, who wrote Psycho, uh, whom Hitchcock then went on and turned that into a movie, one of his most successful of all time. Um, he also inspired characters like Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs, yeah. um, Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and still is continuing to inspire other writers and movie uh, makers into various iterations of little twisted facts from what he actually did in real life into the fictional realm. So obviously, I mean, just with that kind of legacy, you know that this is not going to be a fluffy title. No. It's definitely graphic. But with that kind of legacy of seeing how this one real life person inspired so many different stories from there, mm -hmm. I was expecting great things. I was let down. Scott was not. No, not really. So let me explain my letdown, and then we're going to jump into why Scott is willing to defend this title. So one of the things that I love about some of my favorite serial killer stories, books, movies, would be in storylines like Mindhunters, Copycat, Silence of the Lambs, you're normally seeing this not only from sometimes the victim's perspective, you're almost always looking at it from the law enforcement officer or individual who is trying to then catch this criminal. Mm. And half of it is almost like this, this mind game to try and predict and figure out how this twisted mind picked the victims and how to anticipate the next crime. And that to me is almost as exciting as then finding out who the serial killer is, this wolf in sheep's clothing, and these really intriguing moments. So the problem that I had with this is there are law enforcement individuals, but they're not really prevalent in the storyline. They're kind of a, an aside 
Mm. And they make some observations, but they're not really kind of there for us as readers to really root for. They just kind of, we know the facts. And technically, the very beginning of this story, Eddie Gein's been caught. And we do get some flashbacks to go back into his history, but it kind of begins with the end, which to me was very anticlimactic. But what did you think? So I had seen a documentary about him years ago and um, had done some research on him in the past too, just through reading and so forth. I felt like there were some new facts in this that um, either I had forgotten or had not been brought to light in previous material that I had read or seen about him. But I will say um, a lot of it to me was very familiar. I did feel like it was just a different presentation of the story that I knew. So I didn't really feel like I was missing out on anything. I kind of already knew how it ended before I started reading the book. So it didn't matter to me that it started with him being caught. I also, though, felt like it did give a lot more background on um, his, his childhood. So his, his background was messed up, number one, as you can guess. Yeah. Um, normal Normal childhoods typically don't produce serial killers. Um, however, they definitely portrayed a very stark and very uh, well-defined picture of his mother in particular, um, but both parents, um, that kind of gave you insight into how he could have turned out the way he did and maybe some of the motivation behind what he, why he did what he did. So I just kept going in it, feeling like I was getting something from it, even if it was something that I may be familiar with. They portrayed it in a slightly different light. I will say that it was done in black and white. In one way, I guess it made it easier to read some of the gorier stuff that, that took place. Yeah. If you're a fan of gore, though, you might be a little let down by that because it wasn't in blood red on the on the page. Um, so I could see why you could be on one side or the other in favor or against that. But ultimately, when I got to the end of the book, I felt like I knew more about the character. And that was my goal when I picked up the book. So there were some... Some small little moments that I did like, but it, it didn't always answer every question that I had. So when I found out that, of course, we're not paying attention to law enforcement, we're not hunting down our serial killer. Instead, we're getting this sort of really in-depth perspective into his history. I thought this was going to be more like Mindhunters, where we are really delving into the psyche of this person. And, and you do to some extent. However, there's, there's some really interesting questions that they raise but they don't answer so there's this kind of moment where he's very childlike and you kind of see that childlike repression but then you see this sort of braggart side of him where he's openly to the town being like yeah you want to find granny she's just chopped up into pieces in my backyard mm. she's hanging in my barn yeah she's yeah. hanging in the barn and and you get that sort of moments where you're like, so is he calculating enough? Not this sort of innocent child, you know, developmentally challenged. Is he more devious? And and then you also see some of the sexual sides of it where he's, you know, creating these body suits. And again, it was sick and twisted, but I didn't feel like I understood everything about him. And I think a lot of it had to do with towards the mm. end where you do have the interviews between the police officers and um, Eddie Gein. And in those moments, it's, it's almost like he flips where he goes from, he knew what he did where, like I said, he bragged to the town, but then in the next moment, he's like, I don't remember anything. I may have done that. And he's easily persuaded and led by the investigator who says, do you remember doing these things? So I couldn't put so a finger on him. Eddie Gein was a civil country a little bit backwards, definitely social awkward. In my opinion, lucky person, because to get away with as much as he did before he got caught, I think is just sheer dumb luck. I don't think he had a, a moment of brilliance. I don't think he had a thought in his head that evolved past perhaps his next day. I don't think there was anything missing from this book because I don't think there was any grand ability by, on the part of Eddie Gein to commit the crimes that he did and get away with it for the brief amount of time he did. But he actually did plan ahead. He managed to park the car. He managed to load the gun. He, that day. He knew exactly when Mama was going to be alone. He does have the forethought I to plan knew. and to connive and to kill. He literally knew when he walked into the store, if he had a twenty-two shell, that he was going to be able to do something that he planned to do that day. 
The other thing I will say is, yes, they didn't give in into the law enforcement perspective so much. But what they did brilliantly was give you the townspeople's perspective. They really seriously did a great job of presenting in the book the way that rumors start. And it turned into this huge blow up of events that they actually did a better job of portraying him and turning him into this monster than I think anybody in mainstream media did afterwards. That's one of the things that I liked about the book. It's also one of the things that I thought was kind of um, the point of the book. Nobody knows why he did what he did at that point in time. He didn't give any interviews. He didn't sit down and talk to anybody. He wasn't Ted Bundy. He didn't call somebody up and say, hey, come here to the prison. I'll be happy to tell you why I did what I did. You know, he wasn't in that era where people did that. He was literally painted as something by the rumor mill. There's no chance in history to go back and say, oh, here's the letter Eddie Gein wrote. Yeah, now we know why. And so there, <clears throat> there's, no, there's never going to be a book that's presented that way unless it's strictly a work of fiction. And then I think you're wasting time. Okay, fair comparison. Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper has never been caught. We do not have a definitive answer of who is Jack the Ripper. And yet, when you get a fictionalized version, a retelling of those murders, you get different perspectives and you get some incredible stories. We've they're seen it from, up. they're based on facts. Some more loosely than others. Exactly. Patricia Cornwell did a whole book on, yeah, on the actual scientific facts. scientific methods. And, and in the end, it was inconclusive. But the thing is, is what they did as authors for some of these stories, and even, yes, Gotham by Gaslight, where they're taking a different perspective. You are now looking at it from either the law enforcement, you're looking at it from the eyes of the serial killer, or you're looking at it from the prostitute's perspective. Or you're going a little further out and you're looking at the town folk. But there's so many different ways to tell the same story, and we love those kinds of stories. And I felt like with this one, I didn't want to delve in and find out more about Eddie Gein the same way that I can't wait for the next Jack the Ripper storyline. Instead, this just was a tragic event, a horrific graphic event that definitely took place. Th there wasn't something for me to grab onto with the storyline of, you know, anything visceral, entertaining. So I think that's where everyone's been talking about this book. But I don't know if everyone's actually read it. So would you recommend the book? 100%. If nothing else, read it to disagree with it. Read it to leave yourself with more questions than you had when you started, if you know anything about them. Or if you don't know anything about them, read it to get a perspective that you don't see in graphic novel format for sure. But he's always kind of like a chapter in any of the books that I've read. You know, if it was about a serial killer, they would have a chapter about it again. And oh, how they think that Jeffrey Dahmer might have taken some cues from, or he was similar to him in this way. Or if so-and-so, you know, John Wayne Gacy may have done something similar in, in disposing of bodies to Eddie Gein. But he's always just like a chapter. Um, I've never seen, I've only read one other book actually that went into more detail about him. And it was still, it was a combination. It wasn't just him. So... This being solely about him, if you're interested in learning more about him, by all means, I definitely would recommend it. Whether it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling when you're done, can't say. For me, I would not recommend it. I think that there are better serial killer stories out there. This is an interesting one, but I would probably just find an actual documentary about Eddie Gein, and I would mm -hmm. skip this book. If you're a fan of the Mindhunters TV series, read the Mindhunters book that actually inspired the TV series. It's written by the guy who was the actual agent his cases and his descriptions and some of the things that he talks about how he was then predicting the murders and being able to anticipate, brilliant. Another one that I absolutely love is I'll Be Gone in the Dark. And that's talking about the East Area Rapist who then eventually evolved to murders. There is a documentary was, series yeah. that's on HBO, which we both loved. Um, it's the Golden State Killer. He was the East Area Rapist and the original Night Stalker, and then they found out that this was the same guy, and they, the woman that wrote that book, Michelle yep. Patton Oswalt's uh, deceased wife. wife, she gave him the name, actually, the Golden State Killer, because she figured out that it was one guy doing these things. And sadly, she died before, before the caught. crime was solved, but he has been caught. So it's another great story of a lot of very gritty graphic things that he has done and you mm -hmm. see kind of his evolution but then you see how she is this she's not even a sleuth she's not trained to be a, a crime detective 
and she takes it upon herself to stay up late nights and dig through all these forensic results to try and catch this guy, which is fascinating. In some ways, I said, you're rooting for her. In some ways, you're like, find the bastard who did this, yes. which is why I recommend that story so much more. But don't worry. We shall remain a house divided. We're still married with comics. We are. We can disagree and we can still find other stories that we enjoy just as much or maybe more. So down in the comments section, need to know, have you read, did you hear what Eddie Gein done? Did you like it? Did you, did you? Did you, did you? <laughs> uh, we will be reading Monsters because I know some of you have recommended that for people who like serial killer stories. So I know those recommendations are coming in the comments, but we will be reading that very soon. Mm -hmm. Are there other maybe serial killer graphic novels that you recommend other than Gotham by Gaslight, which we both love? We look forward to hearing from you all. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment, and we look forward to getting you all one step closer to winning the 9.4 copy of Spawn number one. Have a great day, everyone.